Hello folks and welcome to Let's Try Under Rail, where we're going to try out alpha version 0.1.7. Please note that it is an alpha right now, so a lot of things I'm going to talk about might and probably will change by the time the game goes to release. First off, I wanted to show you the character creation and talk a little bit about what Under Rail is. Under Rail actually attracted my attention originally because it looks it plays a lot like the original Fallouts, Fallout 1 and Fallout 2, with the uh, isometric, and I believe I'm saying that right, uh, viewpoint. And it just has that Fallout feel to it, and you'll see that if you've played the Fallouts uh, uh, originally. So, let's go ahead and start a new game. First off, as usual, you start off your, make your character, we'll call him Vertigo. You can make male or female, but right now you just have a blank profile because again it is alpha you have all the stats going i will go ahead and read off the stats so that you guys know what they are strength strength measures characters muscle power it is important for characters who intend to engage in melee combat often or use heavy weapons dexterity dexterity measures characters reflexes hand-eye coordination and finger nimbleness it affects many things such as operating look uh, operating lock handling thievery and throwing Agility. Agility represents characters' reflexes. Fleet-footedness, jumping ability as well, is an affinity towards other athletic and acrobatic activities. Among other things, it affects dodge, evasion, and movement points. It also allows the character to move more quietly, increasing stealth performance. Constitution. Constitution represents the health and general stamina of your character. It's important for all types of characters, but especially for those who plan on making the armor suit their main defense. It also helps prevent or lessen the effects of poisons and diseases. Perceptions. Perception helps the character to use ranged weapons more effectively, as well as detect hidden objects, passages, and creatures. Will. Will measures character mental determination to see his actions regarding, regardless of various mental difficulties, such as pain, suggestion, and overwhelming odds, as well as the, <coughs> excuse me, as well as the force, as well as two forces will onto others and the environment. It's heavily affects all psi disciplines as well as determines the maximum psi and that's one thing you'll notice immediately that's very different from fallout is you do have psi abilities lastly we have intelligence intelligence determines how well the character learns and reasons it's important for a character that focuses on science as all disciplines are dependent on it you have five points to spend where you want however you can uh, remove points from other attributes so let's say we want to have a have a brutish guy he's he's more melee but he's got a little bit of gun strength not too smart so let's drop his will and intelligence to three he's not a smart guy we're going to raise his strength and his agility up all right let's see perception actually since that's ranged actually we're going to get those kind of high dexterity and agility will leave uh, constitution will also raise up since he's probably going to get his ass kicked a lot and we'll go with one more point in agility now you also have skills. I'm not gonna read the description of all of these, but I will read them off. So again, you have an idea of what kind of abilities you can use in the game. You have offense. Under offense, you've got guns, throwing, crossbows, and melee. Under defense, you have dodge and evasion. And, do and I know those sound the same. Evasion is more for AE attacks and range. Dodge is more for defending against melee attacks. Uh, subterfuge, you have stealth, hacking, lock picking pickpocketing and traps under technology you have mechanics electronics chemistry biology and tailoring now there from the sound of it uh, you, if you guess you guess correctly that there are that there is crafting i can't speak well today i can't get my thoughts out apologize about that but anyway, any rate, yes there is crafting i couldn't find how to do it so i don't know if it's in the game yet i believe it is i think you have to Maybe you need a special trainer or whatnot. I wasn't able to get the crafting working just yet. I just might not be that far into the game. Uh, under Psy, you have Thought Control, Psychokinesis, and Metathermics. And under Social, you have Persuasion, Intimidate, and Mercantile. Now, uh, Mercantile is more to sell to uh, vendors. So the higher it is, the better you can, the higher you can sell your goods for and the lower you can buy from them. There's also synergy going on between the skills you might have noticed. So if I just put, let's say, ten, five, even five points into Persuasion, 
uh, get a 20% bonus in the mercantile. So, this is actually is pretty damn handy. Uh, if you plan out, plan ahead, you can get these small bonuses, or even turn them into bigger bonuses, if you would like. But for now, we're just going to, since this is going to be a throwaway character, I'm going to put him, as I mentioned, I'm not going to bother throwing. Go to get crossbows, melee, get his defenses up, since he's probably going to get hit in the face a lot, since he tends to start a lot of fights. He's not, not a good guy. He doesn't have any use for this subterfuge nonsense. Uh, he's very persuasive, maybe not in the greatest way. So we'll pump those up, and that's all the skills. Lastly, we have feats. Again, not going to read all of these. I will scroll down it as I'm talking so you can uh, take a look, maybe if you want to pause and look. These are... Feats are things that you get every level. If you've played pretty much any other RPG made in the last 10 years, you're probably familiar with what these are. For example, we'll go ahead and grab the aim shot. You can perform an aim shot with any ranged weapon for a guaranteed critical hit. Has a cooldown of three turns. Requirements are gun across was at 10 and perception at, I think that's a six. Okay, if it's a six or eight. Now, a lot of these feats you unlock either by leveling or getting, getting certain skills to certain numeric levels. So, and you get a new, you start off with two feats and you get a new feat every level. So the other one we'll pick is uh, just conditioning. Reduces all me mechanical, heat, and cold damage taken by 5% plus 1% for every point in constitution above 5. That sounds pretty good for our guy. That's everything we needed. Let's go ahead and accept and get started. Now we're going to skip over the introduction here. This is just three folks talking about what's been going on. To give you a very, very rough idea, story-wise what's happening, there is a... there's been an earthquake in this underrail, underground uh, section of society called the Underrail. Uh, there's a, Underrail apparently is a very large area, but there's been a recent earthquake which, which has caused some problems. So let's go a quick look at the interface. Here is you. This blank outline is you again, just for the time being. I'm sure we'll get a picture later. You'll also notice right here it says focused. Your character is fully focused, which makes it more effective in ranged combat. Focus is lost when you move. This is to prohibit you from, you know, shoot, run, shoot, run, shoot, run, to trivial, which trivializes melee encounters. However, it seems to always be up when I'm in, in combat. I don't know if that's a bug or if I'm just misunderstanding how that works. Over here is just your chat window. Down here is your hotkeys. Again, if you've played any, almost any game in the last 10 years, you're familiar with this. These are your abilities, attack, uh, stealth, pickpocket, things like that. These are your weapon slots. Right now, I don't have any weapons other than my fists, so my fists are taking them both. Over here are utility slots. To start off with, you only have two. You can get talents, which gives you access to more utility slots, or you can, like if you get a belt, you'll get one additional utility slot, for example, a basic belt. Now here we have the character sheet. This is what we've seen before, so no need to look at it again. Uh, combat stats, this shows how this shows your base defense and offensive stats. Again, I'm not going to go over everything, but this gives you a very quick at a glance looks at uh, how you're doing. Inventory, pretty self-explanatory. This is your your paper doll that shows what armor you're wearing. Right now I'm running around butt ass naked, of course. This I'm not sure of. I think this is your utility slots. I haven't got really many utility items up until this point. Uh, crafting, you see this is blank right now, that's why I think you might either need to learn the skill or maybe you need a specific item to do crafting. I'm not sure, I haven't found it yet. Notes, notes is basically your quests. It's, it's a very simple dialogue for quests, at least right now. I know right now a lot of folks are used to maybe having a quest broken down into to steps. So if you're on a quest to I don't know, retrieve a golden goblet, the quest will start with, you know, talk to this person who is in the lower decks. And then when you talk to them, it strikes it out. And now you have a new section that says, find the key to unlock the shed. It is by the lake. And then when you find the key, that's scratched out. And the next one will be, you know, open, use the key to open up, whatever. Right now, this is very simplistic. It just give, tells you what you need to do. If it's broken up, like I just mentioned, it would just be all in one paragraph. 
it doesn't show you the progress you've done on that quest to that point. I don't know if there's any plans to change that. Not a big deal, but I will say one of my one complaint I do have is a lot of times NPCs will tell you where to go to find the area that you're supposed to go to. Like they will say, oh, you know, you'll need to go out of here, go left, and then the very first cross section, make a right and go straight, and that's it. None of that is written down anywhere. So if you have a really bad memory like me, or if you maybe pick the quest up, but then don't play the game again for another day or two, you might be completely lost. And this is compounded because a lot of times the NPCs, if you talk to them again, they won't give you those same dialogue options, so you can't just ask them again. So hopefully that's something that gets added later on. There's also no mini-map, which right now I actually don't really have a problem with. Uh, help, help just shows you the interface and how it's laid out. We're not going to go over that right now because I'm talking to you about what it is. And of course, main menu, which is nothing. Now, this is important to know before you do anything. Uh, you're currently in a controlled zone. In a nutshell, what that means is you're in a controlled area. They have authority there. They've got cops there. So if you just kill a random civilian, which you can do, you're probably... You're gonna have a hard time making it out alive because everybody's gonna come for you. The last thing is this, uh, basically this lets you go into combat and this shows you your movement points and your action points. And we'll go into that later when we actually get into combat. You can just press enter again to get out of combat as long as there's no hostiles around. So let's go ahead and just start moving around. Show you guys the basics here. I've got a light switch, go ahead and turn that on so I can see. You can hold tab and it will show you everything that's clickable, which is really, really nice. I like that, so you don't have to do the whole hovering your mouse over every single item to try to find what it is you're looking for. So in the desk here, we've got a private quarters key. So we're gonna take that. We have a computer. Let's go ahead and check the computer. Check my personal messages. A key card from Wayne. Hi, I fixed your door, so the key card should work fine now. If you haven't found it yet, the key card should be in your desk. See you around. Well, we found that. So that key card is how we get in and out of our room. Uh, next message is welcome from Tanner. Congratulations, you have passed all the tests we presented. You in the past weeks have now attained full citizenship in Southgate Station, also known as SGS. And you'll see that quite a few times. On behalf of the entire community, I welcome you into our fold. Visit me in my office in the commons as soon as you've rested so we can discuss your duties in the coming days. It said duties. All right, so... I'm going to go ahead and exit out of our computer. I'm going to check everything else in our room, see what we can find, see what we can take from ourselves. And now we have some cave hopper leather armor. Normally, I believe the items are randomized. However, some places it's set, like here, I always find the same stuff. So the armor we want to go ahead and put on, it's got encumbrance 10%, durability 170, uh, mechanical defense 12%. Let's go ahead and put that on. And as you can see, and you might not, be, might not be able to see unless you have this full screen, but as, but when you put it on, your your avatar does change graphically, which is always good. As you can see, we unlocked the door. You can also check these doors, but they're all locked, and I don't have any lock picks, and also I'm not good at lock picking anyway. You can pick locks, and it'll tell you what... <clears throat> excuse me. It will tell you where what the skill is needed to unlock them or to pick the lock rather so let's go ahead and talk to this person I already knew to go here so I was kind of rushing through this beginning part just to give you the basics I'm also going to load a game where I'm further in to show you how the combat works I'm not gonna bother reading all this uh, in a nutshell she's just saying welcome uh, welcome here here's my tutorial to never see coming blah blah, blah. okay doesn't actually say that, but in a nutshell, this is the tutorial part, getting you your first gun, getting you your first armor, showing you how the combat works. And we're gonna do a little bit of the beginning here, like I said, but I will be loading a game later on so you can get an idea of what a maybe typical mission looks like. So we need to talk to Lucas here. And as usual, you see the general dialogue. There's no voice dialogues, at least that I found. I don't think there's any plans for it, so I'm just going to ask him for my gun back. And just to show you real quick, there is barter screens. This is a lot like original Fallout, 
where let's say I want uh, let's say oh I want this ammo, so I double click on that. You can also split stacks if you'd like. So I say I want that. Well, I can you know try to trade in my gun and uh, my bandages. You can see this is moving to the right. That means it's getting closer to the point where he will actually accept it. And of course, if you have a better uh, mercantile skill, you will be able to get more for your money. And if you're like, well, I don't, I don't really want to have to try to drag everything back and forth. You can do auto and it will drag money over instead of items. But as you can see, even with all of my money, I can't afford that, which is fine because I'm not actually going to buy it. So it's going to go ahead and close out of that. And let's go talk to Gorski who is going to show us how to use the guns. Basically, I'm just telling him that Tanner sent us. I already know how to use the consoles. So again, this is just introductory type quest. We can configure these targets. We're actually gonna bring it very close so it's easier for us to shoot it. Now, one thing I don't like about this mission in particular is first we'll equip our gun by double clicking it and as you'll see it put it down here we still have a fist as our alternate weapon because we don't have any other weapons but one thing i do not like about this quest is you start with 50 bullets and you doing this mission takes up your bullets and uh as you'll see later possibly it can take you can run out of bullets relatively quickly now if you want to load our bullets there's a few ways to do this. I just want to show you the, the use wheel, which is pretty neat. When you right click, you can choose how you want to use an item from the wheel. Obviously, this isn't going to work for all items that aren't usable, but uh, we'll just go ahead and say reload our current weapon. Now, another thing that's interesting is if I hold shift or if I hold control, this changes the hotkeys. So you can have a lot of different hotkeys. And by default, when I hold shift, your reload options show up in uh, at the bottom right. Now you'll see there's three different types of ammo here. There's standard ammo. There is, well, I can't see it because I don't have any, but you also have metal piercing, which is better for robotics type enemies. And then you have the hollow points, which is better against organic enemies. And of course, standard is just okay versus both. But we don't have any of those. But from here, you can quickly reload into a different ammo type. But keep in mind, if you do that during combat, it will use your action points. So do that wisely. If you can ahead of time, you will want to load the appropriate ammo. And we'll go into the action point thing once we get into real combat. So when you hover your cursor over a target, it will tell you what percentage you have, percentage chance you have to hit that target with the weapon you have equipped. And another thing I want to show you real quick, and this is going to come into, this is going to be significant later. You can see the action points it takes to fire it, the range. Uh, opt it says maximum range is 10, optimal is 7. So if you get within that 7, you have a better chance of hitting. Critical chance is 7% with this gun. Tells you the magazine capacity and all that, what kind of ammo. Also, durability. 135 out of 135 durab durability. So right now... This weapon is fully repaired. Everything's great. They have an 85% chance to hit. Uh, even I max my fire firearms. My perception's not. My perception is pretty good. So 85% is not too bad. Now for this mission, we need to shoot this or hit this thing 10 times. And I did some experimenting, and you do have to hit it 10 times. So I'm actually counting it out. That's six, seven, eight, nine. And if you're not sure. You can check the console. It'll say total shots, 10, hits 9, misses 1. We do not want to end the session. We want to continue the session. We need one more hit. Okay, good. Now we'll end the session. And I also found out the hard way, if you don't end the session, you can't do this quest. Or the quest doesn't realize you finished it. So we're going to talk to this guy again. Tell him I'm done. And we're done with that quest. We'll get our XP when we turn it in. I believe, yes, and there's also, she also told us that the medical doctor, as opposed to any other kind of doctor, wanted to speak to us for some reason. So we're going to go talk to him real quick. And th again, this will be probably be the last thing we do during the tutorial area, because this isn't that interesting, especially to watch. It's just trying to teach you the basics of the game, how everything works. 
And you can talk, you know you can talk to someone because you get that little bubble when you highlight over them. Basically what this person is telling you is that your test came back and it looks like you have some kind of psi abilities, which apparently is not completely unknown in this world of under rail. But not everyone has it. And in fact, I kind of get the idea that it's rare to have it, but it's not like a if somebody could, you know, had side powers in the real world right now. So basically, the doctor has told us, well, you have these these latent psi abilities, but to take advantage of them, you need to take this pill that we've engineered and you can start learning to do that. So I'm going to take the pill and swallow it. And at first I'm like, oh, nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden I get teleported to a rave. Then I trip out on X and pass out. I don't even know if you can pass out from X. I don't know. I'm not a drug person. So this person's just saying, yeah, you just passed out. Not a big deal. And I ask, well, okay, how do I take advantage of this now? And they tell us about the trainers to check with. Now, as with Fallout... I'm going to reload my gun. And you'll see there's a progress bar, so it does take a little bit of time to reload your gun. As with Fallout, you can kill pretty much whoever you want. So let's just say, you know what? F this place. I'm tired of this shit. Screw you, doctor. This is a random doctor. You can just start blowing people away. And they'll fight back. Granted, she's only got melee. She can't do a lot to me. I've got a gun. She's definitely not going to do too much damage. So I'm going to go ahead and reload. And we're just messing around. I wouldn't actually do this. I don't know how far you can make it. So I ended combat because there was nobody else around. But because I killed somebody here, they're like, hey, this is not very nice. And they're going to come for me. So let's go ahead and actually, you know what? We'll just do finish the combat up. We get this aim shot, which we're not using. Let's go ahead and use that on this guy. And we missed with a 92% chance, which is most unfortunate. Now we've used up all action points, so we'll end the round for ourselves. It is turn-based, obviously, much like Fallout 1 was. And if you have not played Fallout 1 and 2, you are doing yourself grave to surface. I missed again with a 94%. Not having really good luck today. Okay, we're out of action points again, so it is their turn. And they're punching me. You know, you know for doctors, they're pretty pretty sturdy. Gonna blow this guy away again. I can't do aim shot again for another two rounds, I think. All right, now we're gonna take out Dr. Pascal. Pasqual? I'm not even sure. You can also see I've got a, a purple bar now. That's my total Psy. When you use Psy abilities, it drains from your Psy meter, as you might imagine. One more round should do it. But you can see those doctors did a pretty decent amount of damage to me. Now, honestly, probably way too much, because they're just doctors and with fists, and I have a gun. But let's go ahead and end combat. It should be everybody here. Now, I want to show you something here. This is... My number one problem with the game right now. This is this is by far my biggest complaint about this game so far. Notice my gun durability. It was at 135. It's now 61 out of 135. So I lost I lost about half of my gun durability from three fights. Killing three people took half of my durability. So after six fights, five to six fights my gun will be completely broken and I would need to either use a different gun or use, you could buy repair kits. Now here's the problem with that. And I'm not going to harp on this too much because I've been checking the forums and the main developer knows it's an issue and he's going to be looking at it. So it's already been addressed, but a lot, the reason I'm going to talk about it, uh, at least a decent amount here is because a lot of my problems that I have with the game are tied directly to the durability. I haven't been able to make it. I know I've said it multiple times that I haven't made it very far. The durability is one of those reasons. Because I run out of money. I can't afford to fix my guns. And it just becomes very, very difficult because there's lots of enemies. And your only choice is to 
either hope you get lucky with drops or just stealth everywhere and pray that the enemies don't see you because you run out of ammo very quickly. You do get a crossbow for a quest, but that has the same exact problem and you end up running out of, out of uh, durability. So you say, well, why don't you buy the repair kits? The repair kits are expensive and most of the stuff you find starting off isn't worth hardly crap for money. So all of your money goes to durability and honestly it's just it's just very very tedious if i'm quite blunt and again this is alpha and again he has acknowledged that it's you know he knows it's an issue i think this is the very first patch that has durability at all so it's expected that things like this are going to happen so don't think oh well this game has really bad durability i'm definitely not interested in this it's not it's just the case right now it's he's almost certainly going to change it i like i think adam should have durability i think right now it's just way it just degrades far far too quick so next up i'm going to load up a new game or not a new game but a, a game where i'm a little further and i'll pick you guys up then okay we are back so i loaded up to another game that i've got with a different character and you can see that i've taken damage and my side is not that great. Now, here's another issue I have. Side doesn't regenerate on its own. You have to use basically consumables like mana potions, if you will, to bring your side back. I don't like that because I find that it's a little bit a little bit arbitrary restriction to have to keep chugging them to keep your side up if you want to use side. However, I've, I've seen the developer mention how he doesn't want it to regenerate because he wants it to be... Basically, he wants it to be like if you use ranged, you have to worry about bullets. So, if you use Psy, you need to worry about your Psy energy. I can understand that, and I won't get into a whole Psy discussion about balancing the gameplay mechanics. But I, I think maybe if you're someone who's focused on Psy or has a high wisdom, which I believe Psy is based on maybe give you a little bit of regen if you're past like eight wisdom or something like that so someone who is focusing on brute strength or guns sometimes can use psi and then has to use either sleep or use a pack to bring their psi back up but someone who is focusing on that as their main as their main uh, offensive weapon isn't got to worry about chugging them non-stop because at least in my my place my playthroughs so far, I've only ever found one of those, one of the the side side boosters I think they're called. I've only found one. Now I just might be incredibly unlucky, but I, I found a lot of ammo. So I think, and I've never I've never liked the idea that the entirety of your mana or psi or whatever you want to call it regen is based purely on chugging potions or whatever you want to call them. I've never liked that personally, but again, that's just my personal opinion. But again, I, I see where he's coming from. So anyway, I don't have any of those side boosters, but I do have enough to use the powers a few times to show you guys. My health is low. Now we don't want to use a health hypo because those are more expensive. As you can see, it's uh, the value is 120, but it's, I don't quite understand that. It's 120 in, in parentheses. Maybe that's what it would cost for me to buy it, given my current uh, mercantile skill. But obviously, that changes based on uh, your your again your mercantile skill. So we want to use a bandage. Uh, restores 140 hit points over seven seconds. Health must be over 40 percent in order for bandages to be effective. In other words, you can't. I don't think you can use it at all if you're under. 40% or maybe it just heals less I don't know so the idea of bandages at least my take on what he was going for was you use bandages outside of combat right or when you're not in a terrible situation uh, health hypos are for actually using in combat so since we're out of combat it's going to use a bandage we just right clicked on it we choose ourselves. it takes a while but your health goes up the whole time so as soon as you're full you can stop now, I think everyone has stealth. Obviously, it's better if you have the right attribute points and if you put points into it. 
So we're going to stealth. Because you're in stealth mode, you get a little icon for it. So we're going to sneak up here. You go significantly slower. There are traits you can pick up, which make the speed not so slow. Now, see, here we have a rat hound, which is your basic enemy of the game. We found three of them. And that's a pretty decent amount. And I can shoot one for 72% right now. So what we're going to do, we're going to enter combat. We have an 85% chance. We're going to use our aim shot because we really want to take one of these guys down quickly. Got a pop in. It's 25 critical hits. Aim shot always critical hits. And we got lucky and critical hit again. I have a trait which gives me additional movement points after I kill an enemy. However, I've already maxed it hit movement points. So I will go ahead and move my max. Now, speaking of movement points and action points, we will look at that as soon as our turn is up. And it's turn up now because I forgot to hit the space bar. So they will try to move to me. Now, you notice when I move the cursor, it goes from yellow to green. Now, when it's yellow, that means I'm using my movement points. But when it goes green, it's saying, if you want to go this far, you're going to start eating into your action points. Now, to explain that a bit further, you have movement points and you have action points. Movement points can only be used for movement as far as I'm aware and maybe there's traits that change that later but in a nutshell movement points can only be used to move during combat then you have action points action points are for standard things like reloading your weapon shooting your gun using psionics things like that but you can move using your action points so let's say, you know what, I, I just really want to run away from these guys. You're not limited to only moving your at movement points and then forcing you to do an action. You can say, well, I'm just going to use all of my points to run away. If you've played uh, D&D 4th Edition, this should sound very familiar. But also you can see as I'm moving along the right hand side, and I can't really highlight it. But over here, it's showing you the calculations. So if I move here, I'm, I would lose 15 movement points which would lead me, leave me with 16. And I realize you YouTube folks probably have a hard time seeing that because it's, it's really small. But it's giving you the calculations. Also, if I choose to say, I want to attack, and I choose my attack, it actually doesn't show me the math on the right-hand side. I assume it probably will at some point. But uh, it's nice to have on the right-hand side having it show you exactly uh, how that works. Another thing I really like is that if you move so far that it starts taking action points, it actually shows you at the bottom right how many action points you will have left. So let's say that, let's say I still had aim shot up, right? We know it takes 16 action points. We, let's say I'm in a position where I want to move as far away as I can, but still have enough action points to use aim shot. So looking at the bottom right calculations, I see, well, if I move here, I'll still have 26 action points left. If I move here, I'll have 16 action points left. And since it takes 16 points, action points, to do an aim shot, now we know we can move here and take an a then take a aim shot. This allows you to move the maximum ability while still using whatever other actions that you wanted to, which is really, really nice. So what we're going to do actually instead is we are going to use Neural Overload. It's a psionic attack. And if you remember before, we had three types of psionics. We had the psionic attacks. And, oh wait, let's, let's look, because I'm going gonna, gonna to butcher them. We have Thought Control, Psychokinesis, and Metathermics. And as you can imagine, your damage is based on on these skills, or at least I'm pretty sure that's how that's supposed to work. So we're going to use, actually, which, I forget which one is my highest, sorry. One second, because I started pumping these up. Uh, thought control is the highest, and I believe this uses, yes, it tells you underneath the name, it's thought control. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It's 18 action points and 15 side cost. There's another one I have called cryokinesis, which does damage, but it also gives them a chill debuff, which uh, which decreases the target movement's points by 10 for two turns and stacks three times. So this would be great if you were 
trying to kite the enemy, or at least you didn't want them to get into melee. Maybe they have a really nasty melee attack. Uh, we'll go ahead and use cryostasis first, just for grins. We chilled him out a little bit, and we're going to see. What does it take? 15. 15 psi. Or, I'm sorry. 18 action points. So can I move somewhere and still have enough? Because I want to get out of melee if possible. This leaves us with 21, so we're going to move, and then we're going to Neural Overload. <laughs> I, li I love the noise for that. And it also shows you an icon for the type of damage you did. Now we're completely, well, we're out of action points. We can't do anything else. So we're going to space. Now it's the dog's turn. All of them. The rat hounds. So now here's where I'm going to make a tactical decision. Or is that strategic? Anyway, I'm going to use all of my movement points to move here. And then I'm going to shoot and hope that I get a kill. Now, the reason I did that is because I have a talent called uh, Hit and Run. So now I have 25 movement points back. Now that I've killed that enemy, I was given back the 25 action points. So I'm going to move again. And I'm out of... I'm out of Psy, so I can't use my Psy abilities anymore. And again, if you have a trouble seeing, sometimes enemies will be behind walls. If you just hold tab, you can see enemies. So we can just switch the target. Nope, I'm having, there we go. There he is. 54%. Not great. But I'll go ahead and take my shots. I'm out of action points. Space bar. Now see, he had to use... Normally these dogs can attack three times. But because he had to move so far, his movement ate up all of his movement points and enough of his action points so he could only attack twice. So again, that's pretty pretty damn useful for scenarios like this. Now my aim shot is back up. I want to go ahead and use that. 95% chance to hit. And 35% killed him. And I think there's one more dog. I'm going to move back a bit. Nope. Looks like combat's over. We're actually going to re-stealth because I do think there's one dog left. And this, and we'll be uh, bringing this to a close here pretty quickly. It, this type of game I find is kind of hard to show off, especially because it is an alpha right now. And I haven't gotten very far for reasons I've mentioned, such as the durability of the weapons made it uh, very hard because I kept running out of money and running out of guns, and I had didn't really have a way to attack, so I ended up having to just run away a whole lot. Which, again, will be fixed. All right, there's not another dog there. So, anyway, that is Under Rail. You can find this actually on Desura. It's also on Steam Greenlight. So, I strongly advise you go to vote for this. Now, as far as... Well, let me just say this. On Desura, if you purchase it now, then you get access to the Alpha immediately. Now... As to do I recommend you do that, right now, it's, it's to be bluntly honest, it's hard for me to suggest that you do. Because I feel like the some design decisions that have been made right now, again, mostly the durability thing, uh, is... It's taking a lot of fun out of the game, to be to be totally honest. I, I found it to be mostly frustrating because of that. So it's hard for me to suggest that you do that if you buy it right now. However, and it's a big however, I personally am going to be keeping a very close eye on this game. The main developer is very active in his community in the Underrail forums. He also seems very open to feedback. As soon as people started complaining about the durability, he explained why he made it the way he did. And he said that he was going to look at it and reevaluate it. And he also told, you know, why the underlying design mechanics that he's trying to fix. Like people were getting too rich, so he did it this way. Again, this is going to be a back and forth during the alpha as he tries different things. And I really, really like that he's he seems to be very open to this feedback and he's very much about discussing it. 
I like that a lot. It shows me that he really does want this to be a, a really good game. So while I honestly was not, didn't really enjoy playing it that much right now, I have a lot of hope in this because I am a huge, huge fan of Fallout 1 and 2. I like all the Fallouts, but I absolutely love Fallout 1 and 2. I really like this style. I like the ambient music. I like the way the, the game feels. It just has that somewhat dreary feel, especially when you're going through caves and you hear the dogs howling in the background. So I really like the art direction. I like the, the sounds. I really like where this is going. So while I couldn't say, oh yeah, go buy this right now and hop into the alpha, uh, if you don't, keep an eye on it. Uh, thumb it up on Steam Greenlight and keep an eye on it. What I'm considering doing is maybe either every alpha patch or every other alpha patch doing a new video and talking about what's changed and what my current thought is on the game at that state. Because again, I, I'm very much looking forward to this uh, hitting the hitting the release state i don't know i can't talk today i'm sorry i apologize but and i know i'm rambling but i i just want to make it 100 percent clear that even though i'm not recommending this game today it's it's something that i think has a lot of potential and i know that the p word gets abused a lot these days but but given again given the especially the the main developers feedback and openness to looking at mechanics I, I feel very positive about this game. So anyway, that's enough of me rambling. I apologize. I don't know what's wrong with me today. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this. Uh, as always, you know, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know if you've played this game, what you think. I will put links to this game both on Desura and Steam in the links below. So if you want to either uh, purchase it or go vote for it on Steam Greenlight, you can do that. And uh, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.